Welcome back. So we're running into some familiar territory with uh, mechanics we've seen, problem solving mechanics we've seen before. In this case, we're curious about if the volume uh, current density of the free volume or free current density is equal to zero everywhere, the curl of the auxiliary field H vanishes and we can express H as the gradient of some scalar potential W. We've seen this before back in chapter 3. And so we see that h equal to negative uh, gradient w, therefore gradient squared uh, w is equal to the divergence of m. Okay, that's simply an uh, equivalence relation there. So according to uh, the divergence of uh, h equal negative divergence of m, so w obeys Poisson's equation while uh, divergence of m is treated as the source. This opens up all the machinery that we saw in electrostatics. As an example, find a field inside a uniformly magnetized sphere by separation of variables. Okay, we've seen this before. So let's write out the potentials of the spherical case where we only have um, an AL for the inside component and a BL for the outside component. Again, this has to do with the boundary conditions of um, the potential going to zero at infinity. Um, so we see here that the boundary conditions work out to where, again, on the boundary, the potential inside has to equal the potential outside. And at the boundary, the normal derivatives have to be equal. Um, and in this case, they're equal to the perpendicular component of the magnetization or m cosine theta. Let it work through. All right, so as we're moving along, we see here that um, let's recall that we need to use the boundary conditions with the potential in order to solve for the coefficients of the potential and write out the equation. Again, we've saw all this in chapter three, back with the electrostatics. Separation of variables led us to these potential formulations. So now we just have to apply orthogonality and all that stuff to actually see what the coefficients are. So let's start with the continuity of W, which follows from the gradient theorem. Okay, so if two points are infinitesimally separated, the last integral goes to zero, as you might see here. And all that says is that the boundaries have to equal. So we get that. The potential at the boundary has, has to equal. All right, so in the beginning, we see from that that the uh, boundary conditions apply to equation one. Uh, we have... AL RL equals BL over RL raised to the L plus one. Again, we've seen all this before, nothing new. Simplify over. Equation two says the normal derivatives have to be equal, and in this case, they have to be equal to the um, perpendicular component of the magnetization. Take the derivatives, set them equal. Now, substituting in one into two and solving or combining these two equations, we see that we get a simplified form of the summation of 2L plus 1 of R to the L minus 1 times AL, PL, where it's Lagrange um, polynomial, equals M cosine theta. Now, based on the fact that we have a cosine theta on the right-hand side, that tells us which order of the Lagrange polynomial we need, and that is L equals 1. Therefore, A of L is equal to 0 for L uh, not equal to 1 in this case, not equal to 0. So we just plug in one and we see what a1 is equal to, which is m over three. So that uh, for L not equal to one should be not equal to one. Um, but nonetheless, so we see that we plug in one for everything where we see an L and we solve for AL and that's equal to m over three. Thus we know what the potential inside needs to be and therefore we can solve for the H of the inside via the divergence, and we see that we get negative one-third m, so b is equal to mu naught h plus m, okay, which is the exact result we found using another method. Nice to see the consistency once again.